Hello guys, Matthew here and welcome back again to the TechTik YouTube channel. Oddly enough, the Intel's new, so to speak, more enterprise-oriented chipset, the C232, which key feature is support for the latest Intel Skylake Xeon CPUs, made its way into Asus Pro Gaming sub-brand of their motherboards, which is kinda confusing to be honest, but more on that later on. As some of you may notice, the product box of the E3 Pro Gaming V5 model is actually pretty similar compared to the last generation of Asus Pro Gaming series of motherboards based on the Z97 or H97 chipsets. The packaging on the front received some subtle changes, now we have a picture of the motherboard itself on the front, together with a notion of the bundled invite code for the 15-day premium account for the World of Warships game. Going to the back of the box, you'll come across onto another picture of the motherboard with its pointed out components, back I.O. layout and technical specifications, and next to that you can see a more detailed overview of the main features. Opening up the box, here we have a nice thick user manual with optical disk with drivers and software in it. Here are some sticker labels for marking up the cables. IO shield, zip ties, and that's actually a new one for me. A screw for the M.2 module and four SATA cables. And here is the motherboard itself. The Pro Gaming series color-wise reminds me a lot of their older Republic of Gamers motherboards with its black and red color scheme, but without being so overwhelming and with just the right amount of details like on the heatsinks of the chipset and the 10-phase power design and regulation around the CPU socket and on the PCB itself in a form of trace circuits, as you can see it here in the left bottom corner, where you will also find the upgraded Asus Supreme FX audio circuitry which brings in better Nishikon capacitors, 300 ohm headphone amplifier and red illuminated AMI shielding. Moving over to the more juicy parts of the motherboard, being a standard sized ATX model, you'll get a decent number of PCI slots. Here we have two PCI Express 3.0 x16 slots, one being x16 and the other x4 of electrical configuration, supporting only AMD's Crossfire Multi GPU setup. Here you'll also find two PCI Express 3.0 x1 slots and two old school PCI slots. In between them you'll find an M.2 slot which supports modules up to 110mm in length and which is equipped with a PCI Express 3.0 X2 bandwidth. Speaking of the storage and memory, here we have 6 SATA 3 ports without any SATA Express connectors and moving away from that to the top you can see 4 RAM slots supporting up to 64GB of ACC or non-ACC DDR4 RAM. That's basically it in regards to the layout of the main components and beside that of course going around the motherboard you will find your other common things like the 8 pin EPS power connector in the left top corner, 24 pin ATX power connector right next to the USB 3 header on the right outer side of the motherboard, a total of 4 4 pin fan headers and your usual set of headers on the bottom, audio, USB 2 and front panel header. Going to the back IO panel as you can see here you'll also find a pretty common set of ports on the USB 3.1 type A and Type-C ports jumping out of that usual bunch. So, what's an enterprise-grade like chipset doing in a gaming type of motherboard? Since the point of this chipset is to support Intel Xeon CPU platform, for all of those who actually need it and would buy this motherboard solely because of that feature, it's odd to see that motherboard manufacturers are marketing their models like a gaming or overclocking type of motherboard. I don't think that users which are in need of a Xeon platform because of its particular architecture, features and ACC memory support also need those kind of extra features which a gaming series of motherboard like this one has. This just unnecessarily brings the price of the product up, which in the case of the Asus E3 Pro Gaming V5 model is already at the pretty steep $150 mark. This is actually a pretty fresh problem as with the release of the Skylake platform, Intel decided to remove the Xeon support from their consumer chipset like the current Z170, while the former Z97 still had it. From the Intel's point of view this needed to be done as they lost track of the real market demand for the Xeon CPUs as more and more users started buying Xeon counterparts and using it on the mainstream platform as a very similar alternative to the regular desktop Haswell and Broadwell CPUs due to their low availability 
availability and production volume. All of this kind of brought in some confusion to the motherboard manufacturers and hence we are now seeing C232 chipset based motherboards being marketed in a somewhat wrong way. Bottom line for users who need an Intel Skylake Xeon support, the best course of action for motherboard manufacturers is to offer them a reliable stripped down model with basic features, ports and value oriented price, while others who don't need Intel Skylake Xeon support can always pick a B150, H170 or Z170 chipset based motherboard. That's it guys for this time, thank you once again for checking out the unboxing and preview of the ASUS E3 Pro Gaming V5 motherboard. Feel free to give us a thumbs up if you like this video, leave a comment down below if you have any questions about the product and of course if you would like to see more content like this you can subscribe to our Tech Tech YouTube channel or you can just check out our other videos from before.